speaker, Chanda Hinton Likely is the executive director of the Chanda Plan Foundation, an organization that advocates for preventative health care and the power of choice. We tend to think of challenges as obstacles that prevent us from being who we are or getting what we want. Chanda will share her story of how challenges and how the choices she made actually led her to the life she leads today. Please welcome Chanda Hinton Likely. We all experience challenges. There is beauty and suffering in the challenges we face, but how we choose to deal with our challenges is the biggest testimonial of all, because it truly defines who we are. When I was nine years old, I experienced the biggest challenge of my life when I chose a red popsicle. This particular choice resulted in me being shot by a 22 rifle. It of course was an accident, a 14-year-old boy pointed and pulled the trigger to what he thought was an unloaded gun over a playful argument about a popsicle. This left me with two choices. Do I give up or do I move on? I chose to move on by gradually accepting my paralysis, embracing my new physical limitations and the need for somebody to get me in and out of bed every day for the rest of my life. And I made life great. I have wonderful friends, I went to high school, I got my bachelor's in communications, I was successful, I was accomplished. Just when I thought things couldn't get any better, another challenge entered my world. When I was 21, I started having the most indescribable and chronic pain in my abdomen, chest, and lower back. When the, the doctors couldn't find the source to the chronic pain, I basically had to find alternative solutions. And so when I had this alternative solutions, I basically had to decide, do I give up or do I move on? And with that, I chose to move on by gradually embracing a new way of approaching my disability. It got worse and terrifying by the day, my chronic pain. And when my, basically my sister, who was a yoga instructor, was able to bring forth information about the body's way of its ability to heal itself. When my sister approached us with me being 21, and I eventually got bed bound when I was 21 because of the chronic pain, I was, I had a feeding tube put in, I weighed 59 pounds, and I knew that I was dying. So when my sister came to me, my mother, my physician, and said, why aren't we trying alternative therapies? Why are we not giving Chanda's body what it deserves and it needs? And she mentioned things such as acupuncture, massage, chiropractic, cranial sacral, adaptive yoga, physical therapy. And I have to admit, in the very beginning, I was a little bit, I was skeptical. But I think it was more of a mental tug of war with myself about, because of my spinal cord injury, if I've been surrounded by physicians and specialists in all different areas of disability, if integrative therapies worked, why didn't I know about it? And why wasn't I already doing it? Despite my reservations, I can remember the very first acupuncture session I went to. The reason I remember it so well is that when I built out of that session, I, for the first time in three years, had no chronic pain. This was huge for me. I spent three years of my life in chronic pain, waking up every day thinking that I was going to die. And I just spent 20 minutes in an acupuncture session and I have no pain. So my next question is, how does this work? Why is my body improving so dramatically? So with my improvements in my health by using integrative therapies, not only did my body get better, my mind got a lot better. I had the energy to kind of do some research to figure out what's going on. So in my research, what I found out is that people with spinal cord injuries, and it's not only a spinal cord injury, it can be any long-term disability. Spina bifida, cerebral palsy, muscular, or, uh, muscular multiple sclerosis, sorry guys. Uh, multiple sclerosis. When you look at a long-term disability, that's your primary condition. But your primary condition also creates secondary conditions. For me, my secondary conditions included things 
such as muscle atrophy, um, joint stiffness and fusion, a lot of bowel and bladder dysfunction. Things that I, I, I didn't even think were going to be such a huge part of my life. So when I found out that, and, and, right, and, the, and the way that my model, the medical model was approaching my secondary conditions is that they were giving me a, a pill for every one of those secondary conditions. So when I got chronic pain, I got a narcotic for that secondary condition. In my research, I also found that integrative therapies are a great substitution to addressing secondary conditions instead of having to always take the medication. So for me, I found that uh, massage therapy was really great for my muscle atrophy, but it, it also increased my blood circulation reducing pressure sores. I found that acupuncture did help with my bladder and bowel dysfunction and a lot of my internal organs. So with this, and now that I found out why I was improving, it was really simple. I wanted to maintain this good health. So I wanted to spread the word, and the first person I wanted to spread the word to was my insurance company. <laughs> so <laughs> what I did is, if, and I'm on Medicaid, and a lot of people with long-term disabilities, they are on Medicaid because there's such high cost with home care, with your personal home care. I went to Medicaid and I asked them if they would fund this, and of course the answer was no. So I was very naive at the time, and I'm like, well, let me talk to your supervisor. And the answer was still no. What I found out is that it's our legislative body that makes these decisions. This is another challenge for me. And what... What do you suppose I did? Did I move on, or did I give up, or did I move on? Oh. Absolutely, I moved on by providing access, education, and creating systemic change. And by doing so, I started a nonprofit organization for a short-term solution. We now give funding for people with physical disabilities to access preventative care. But this can, this can only serve so many people. There has to be a systemic change. So I went to the Colorado legislation in 2009. I passed a bill which now mandates a pilot program. It starts July of this year. So people with spinal cord injuries will now do acupuncture massage, chiropractic therapy, and we will prove not only are we improving lives, but that we are providing a cost savings to our state. In closing, I want to say that I choose challenges. Had I not been sick, had, or had I not been shot and sick, and had this barrier of having access to something that made me healthy, I wouldn't be the person I am today or doing the things I'm today. So I encourage you to choose challenges. Embrace it. Sit on a park bench with, with it. Squeeze it. Love it. Make it a part of your life and see where it leads you. So choose challenges.